Rogue Notions is a tournament where every single meta in our deck is banned, meant to be a way for new strategies to come to light without being entirely oppressed by the current meta. It's fun, it's janky, and it's just up my alley. Welcome to The Lab, the series where I test off-meta strategies in some of your favorite Yu-Gi-Oh! formats. Today, and in our format, we're playing Normal Pendulum. What's the meaning of this? I took your advice. From now on, I'm normal. Here's the list. Normal Pendulum isn't really an archetype, more of a subclass of cards. Each of these cards have no effect on the field and are treated as normal monsters, but are also Pendulum monsters. Hence the name. To summarize Pendulum monsters, each Pendulum card has a thing called a scale. When put in the Pendulum zone, and if a monster's level or rank is in between two cards low scale and high scale, you could special summon them all out of the hand and even the top of the extra deck if they were destroyed earlier. That's right. These cards don't go to the graveyard. Pendulum cards can have effects in the Pendulum Zone, and some of these cards do, but none of these cards have effects in the Monster Zones, so you don't have to worry your little head and have to stress about too much. Now that all the people who don't know what a less than or greater sign means left, uh, let's get into the deck list. First, we'll go with the Total Vanillas. Three copies of Flash Knight, a level 4 scale 7 monster with 1800 attack. Mandragon, a level 5 2 scale. And three copies of Fire Opalhead, a level 6 scale 0. Next we have the Dragoons. All of these cards have effects involving the battle phase and normal monsters. First up we have three copies of Dragoons of Dragonia, level 4 scale 2, whose pendulum effect reads, once per turn, if a normal monster you control destroys an opponent's monster by battle, after damage calculation you can add a level 4 or higher normal monster from your deck to your hand. There's a lot of cards that can be added from this effect. Three copies of Sea Dragoons of Draconia. When a monster is destroyed by battle, you can special summon one normal monster from your hand. You can only use this effect once per turn. Oddly enough, this card is a hard once, but Dragoons of Draconia isn't? I don't know why, but oh well. That never really comes up. Main thing you need to understand is that you will barely ever use this card's effect. Most of you are going to be using it for its high scale. And three copies of Sky Dragoons of, of Draconia. Once per turn, when a normal monster you control inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you get to target one card in the field and destroy it. This card is great for popping back row, but it still suffers from having to do things in the battle phase. Still, it's worth more than a lot of other cards. Then we have the Magicians. Three copies of Dragon Pulse and three copies of Dragon Pit Magician. Uh, Pit and Pulse are mostly meant to be the best, some of the best skills you have, and you will never really be able to summon out Dragon Pit. Uh, as it is a level 7, and the only monsters with scales that can ever summon it out is itself. You would need two copies of Dragon Pit Magician in order to bring it out, and why would you want to? It's a 900 attack and 2700 defense monster. Uh, the Magician cards have this effect where if you have another Magician card in your Pendulum Zone, you can discard a Pendulum monster, and with Pulse, you can target one face-up monster in the field, and with Pit, you can target one spell or trap card in the field to destroy them. This is a great... Uh, Discard engine to get cards into your graveyard rather than the top of your extra deck, which allows for some other uh, synergies coming up later, but typically you're just using this for the scales. You don't really want to go ahead and spend a whole lot of time getting rid of the monsters that you are going to be pitching off of these cards uh, to not be able to pen them out later. Then we have the Ignite cards. Two copies of Ignite Cavalier and three copies of Ignite Gallant. Both the Ignite cards are uh, scale twos, but Cavalier is a five and uh, Gallant is a six, which are important. Both these have the Pendulum effect where, if you have an Ignite card in your other Pendulum Zone, you can destroy both cards in your Pendulum Zone, and if you do, add a Fire Warrior type monster from your deck or graveyard to your hand. Ignite Gallant and Ignite Cavalier are both the only two Fire Warrior monsters running in this deck, so you're basically getting a replacement for each of them and loading up your top of your extra deck. Finally, for the pens, we have the odd ones out. Three copies of Dragonhorn Hunter. Its pendulum effect reads all normal monsters gain 200 attack. You get no battle damage from battles involving normal monsters you control. A level 6, a scale 3. And three copies of Lance Ferencus. It's Lance Ferencus? Uh, it's a dinosaur with a big old beak. If a normal monster you control attacks a defense position monster, inflict piercing battle damage to your opponent. Pretty good when it comes to dealing with the pesky uh, floaters and monsters that stay set on the field. A level 6, scale 7 isn't that bad either. So with all the main pendulum monsters out of the way, we also have the extra 5 cards in our deck. We have... Three copies of Summoner's Art, add one level 5 or higher normal monster from your deck to your hand, which is absolutely fantastic. And then basically let you get out of any jam you might be in, be it high scale or low scale troubles. And two copies of Just a Break. When your opponent's monster declares an attack on your normal monster, destroy all monsters on the field except attack position normal monsters. Normally, that's all of them. And it's pretty good. It's a great battle trap to go ahead and destroy all of your opponent's monsters, and it's almost Mirror Force in this deck. Finally, we're running quite a number of XCs cards. For the 4s, we have one black ship, 
one Heartland Draco, one Diamond Crab, one Malevolent Sin, and one Asophil. For the fives, we have Volcasaurus, Dvorak, and Shark Fortress. And for the sixes, we are outing Force Focus and Swordbreaker. Force Focus and Swordbreaker are the two cards you can, I've personally summoned out most because of the amount of sixes that we have in the deck. Force Focus uh, is basically a slow monster negate on a level 5 or higher effect monster, but sometimes that's exactly what you need. And on a 2800 body, still pretty good. And Swordbreaker. By detaching one Xyz material from this card, you can declare a monster type, and it gains the following effect. At the start of the damage step, if this card battles a monster of that type that has been declared, destroy that monster. Now, important to note, this effect is lingering. It's just a fantastic outing. Uh, if there's any sort of monster that cannot be destroyed by battle, or if you don't have a monster that is higher than any of your other monsters. Finally, for the links, we have one Genator Transverser, and one Berserker of the Tenyi, and finally the bread and butter of this deck, Defender of the Labyrinth. It requires two normal monsters of material, gives non-effect monsters you control 500 attack, and decreases your opponent's effects monsters by 500 attack. If this card is in its owner's possession, is destroyed by your opponent's card, you can target a non-effect monster in your graveyard, special summon it. Unfortunately, this effect doesn't come up as often as you'd like. The only few times that you could be able to do this is by pitching them off of Dragon Pit and Dragon Pulse, or by having them be underneath an Xyz monster and using them as either material or if the Xyz monster is destroyed. Either way, this battle trick of Decreasing all of your opponent's monsters by by 500 and increasing all your normals by 500 is incredibly important and a lot of the ways that you beat over a ton of different monsters. So that's enough cooking up in the lab, but let's bring this out into the field and test our theory. Our first match is up against Crawler World Legacy, and this replay shows exactly what this deck loses hard to. Torrential Tribute. We're going second, our opponent sets two and pass, including the Torrential and O'Crawler Axon. Our turn starts, we end up grabbing a Summoner's Art, grabbing two Ignites. Ignite Cavalier. And Ignite Gallant. Scaling up with Sea Dragoons and Cavalier, and pending four. Scale swings on my heart, and that's going to be the end of the game. Torrential Tribute into that is very devastating. And oh, the Dynamicious off the top to take care of our scales. And they take care of the high scale! Oh my gosh. Well, uh, that is going to be pretty much the end of the game. They're going to go ahead and activate World Legacy World Chalice in order to add World Legacy Survivor. Pitching up top, finding a crawler, and one, two, three Shadal cards off the top. Ugh, milling all three of these is absolutely crazy. And this trap card just adds some more advantage as well. Their effect to be able to pop the Cavalier, set one of the cards in, in there in the graveyard, adding a card to the hand and setting sending another uh, Shadal, Code Breaker, Virus Swordsman, setting another, and then afterwards setting another Deus Ex Crawler. Battle phase 2300. We might be able to do something if we draw a high scale by allowing us to pend back out uh, any two of these cards thanks to the Link Arrow of Code Breaker, Virus Swordsman, but we draw just a break. And that's going to be the end of the game. We scoop from here. Uh, that shows you the power of uh, Torrential Tribute in this format. Our second match is up against Prank Kids. And oh, would you look at that. They don't end up drawing anything. One Lampsies and no other cards means that this deck sets one in pass. And it's time for us to go ahead and play around Torrential this time. Uh, we have a decent hand going uh, in this one. We have a couple of low scales with the Ignites, um, but a lot of high scales as well. Because we want to play around Torrential Tribute, we set up the Ignite Gallant and the Dragon Pit Magician. Pending. And Swing Scales of My Heart, Pending 3. Ignite Cavalier, Land Ferencus, as well as the Sea Dra Dragoons, and bring out Defender of the Labyrinth. This is most. This plays most should go ahead and keep out the pen skills for next time. But with the activation of Lost Wind, we are a little bit concerned about that. We attack with Land Ferencus and Defender of the Labyrinth, putting our opponent at 4,800. They draw for turn, and it's a Mystical Space Typhoon. No second prank hits. Uh, if they ended up drawing one, they could have been easily able to go into the Pandemonium and have their plays go off, but unfortunately, they ended up bricking. The MST on the Ignite Gallant is quite unfortunate, but luckily, we could just activate our Fire Opal Head, Normal Summon our False Knight, and tack for just a little bit over lethal. We wanted to play around the uh, Lost Wind, and in case they had any sort of hand traps as well, just going in as low as possible to the ground. 
and that's going to be the game too. Uh, this really shows how fast its games can go, whether it be win or loss. For our third game, we are going up against Trap Hero? Um, mostly this seems to be a trap focus deck based around the battle phase, and they drew Torrential in hand. Uh, they are going to Normal Summon Wild Heart, set three, and pass. This feels like a death sentence, however, I do feel like we do have a couple of options because I don't have any spell trap removal. We activate Summoner's Art, adding a Fire Opal he uh, head into the field. We are going to activate Dragoons of Draconia, activate Sea Dragoons of Draconia, and Pend four. Here, they, oddly enough, don't go for Torrential, mostly because they're trying to play around the other trap, but we're going to XC Summon Swordbreaker. They're trying to play around with Wall of Disruption, and here they realize that they cannot beat this card if we call Warrior. So they're going to Torrential Tribute here, keeping the Elemental Hero Wildheart on the field, and we have to pass a turn. Luckily, because they don't have any other monsters to summon out other than a second Wildheart, and they aren't going to XC into level 4, this is fine for right now. We don't mind taking this little bit of damage in order to keep our game rolling and almost every single one of our draws are live <gasps> except for just a break we're going to pen summon out fire opal head hit it for one and hit for 1k then we're going to dragoons of draconia adding another fire opal head and as the monster is destroyed we're going to see dragoons of draconia bringing out the fire opal head they're going to activate wall of disruption on both of our monsters destroying it and we're going to set one and pass this turn they just end up setting a card and keeping our extra monster zone locked is probably the best thing that they can do. Here we're going to normal summon out Dragon Pulse Magician and Link Summon into Defender of the Labyrinth. This allows for our monsters to lose a little bit of attack and bring out two penned monsters. We're going to the battle phase and they're going to activate another Wall of Disruption. Luckily, because I had planned around this, I brought out Defender of the Labyrinth first. Allow me to bring back out another monster. Dragon Horn Hunter attacks in, but the Needle Ceiling destroys all monsters except for the Wild Heart. Quite unfortunate. However, you can already see that this deck is currently going pretty well. Uh, even though we are losing, any sort of advantage that we can get throughout all of their back row wins. Uh, we bring out, we draw for turn, we bring out another Dragon Pulse Magician, and we pend out the Fire Opal Head, just attacking it over, over the Wild Heart alone, worried about our next draw. We're going to add Lance Ferencus to hand, and with the Sea Dracoons of Draconia, bring out the Lance Ferencus and attack. Main phase two, we're going to bring out Defender of the Labyrinth, and normal summon Dragon Pulse Magician. For turn, we're going to pass here, and they're going to set and pass. We're going to activate Summoner's Art just to go ahead and play around any of the other effects they might have, but this unfortunately turns on their bad aim. Bad Aim is going to target off the uh, Defender of the Labyrinth in order to keep themselves alive because their spell card is dead. And with Summoner's Art, we're going to add a Sky Dragoons of Draconia. Just in case they happen to be available to destroy one of our back row. We're going to activate Defender's uh, Effect to add Ignite Gallant. And they're going to chain Labyrinth Archfiend to Special Summon it out. And while it's Special Summoned, you can set another normal trap from the deck. Luckily, because we ended up choosing the other level 6... They end up choosing another Wall of Disruption, so we have to end it this turn. We pend. And bring out another Fire Opal Head as well as Sky Dragoons. With these two monsters, we XC summon Force Focus, negating the effects of Labyrinth Archfiend and trying to go for game. Into the battle phase and swing in for lethal. So with a little bit of luck and not being able to OTK back on the second turn, this deck has a lot of crackback ability if you're able to get any live draws or keep yourself alive throughout the next turn. Give this deck an inch and it'll take a mile. Our fourth match is up against Tri Brigade Sprite. And whoo boy, uh, this guy's hand was uh, pretty good for a long portion of this. Our opponent's going first. He's going to pitch Tri Brigade Fractal in order to get the full suite out. Kits and Nerval. Nerval add Keras. Keras, normal summon, bring out three. And brings out the Havalskir, uh, the Desperate Doom Eagle. Draw for turn here. We're going to activate Summer's Art, adding Lance Ferencus. And Fire Opal Head. We're going to pend out the Dragon Pit Magician and the Dragon Pulse Magician. 
activating the uh, Dragon Pulse Magician effect to discard and destroy Haravsgar, returning the uh, monster back, and we're going to pend two. Bringing out that is going to be the Torrential Tribute. We're going to Normal Summon Dragoons and attack and pass turn. Feeling good about this so far, they're going to draw for turn and pass immediately. I think that Marion might have a chance here. I Normal Summon out another Dragoons and link for Defender of the Labyrinth. Pending two. And it's another Torrential Tribute. We end up having to pass here because we've tried to go for Lethal Air. But I thought we could do something. They're going to set two back row and pass. We're going to draw for turn. With it bringing just a Dragon Pulse Magician, we're going to Dragon Pit Magician targeting their single back row. Oh, but it's the Chainable Tri Brigade Revolt. Oh, no. Okay, well, incoming out Kit, Nerval, and uh, Fractal. Rugal, Rugal brings itself uh, on out. Nerval, adding Keras. We're going to num bring out Lance Frinkus. Tri Brigade Rugal into this. If I didn't know that this card was a brick, I probably should have gone for the Fractal, but that's neither here nor there. We're going to attack the Rugal in just in case, and the Fractal is going to return. They draw for turn. They draw a Sprite Red. Oh, that's going to be so bad. Uh, Keras, banish three. Bring out another Haravsgar. Banish the uh, Magician. Bring out the Mannequin Cat and going to be able to target the uh, Defender of the Labyrinth. They target the Labyrinth effect to bring out a Wind-Up Kitten to bring out Defender. And uh, Ralsgar in. 802k. And here is where I make my big misplay. L Unfortunately, they're going to have pretty much every answer they can possibly think of with the Sprite Sprashers. But we're going to go ahead and toss out the Dragon Pulse Magician to take care of the Ralsgar in the first place. They're going to return the Dragoons, and here is where I make my big mistake. By pending out the Fire Opal Head, we play around Earth Monsters, and my big thinking is they're going to have the Calcifar, which is a 2600 attack monster that we can't out at all. Uh, but So instead we go for Fire Opal Head, thinking they'll bring out a Sprite. Little did I know that Mannequin Cat has another target, Springan's Captain Sargass. Springan's Captain Sargass effect, Mannequin Cat, detached Fire Opal Head, and that's going to be the end of the game. Uh, overall, Sprite Tri, Mel Sprite Tri Melfi is one of the strongest decks in this game so far, but hey, we had a good run against them either way. So, those were the games. And I gotta say, for a meta tournament, this deck went surprisingly well. The pros of the deck. One, despite being full of differently scaled pendulum monsters, this deck is very consistent at doing what it does best. Pend four and deliver heavy damage. Two, the deck is very easy to pilot. Uh, the most amount of thinking I had to do in a tournament setting was wondering which of the few skills I had that would be best for each scenario, and after that I turned my brain off and still won some. And three, the support that normal monsters have is crazy. I personally swapped out Heart of the Underdog for Summoner's Art, but the ability to draw almost your entire deck to set up your future turns make it a fantastic inclusion to make the deck have an even harder high roll. And the cons. One, this deck loses to any spell trap removal and a torrential tribute. If you don't respect the back row, you won't make it far. Two, this deck's end board isn't as strong effect wise as most others. When all of your monsters have no effects and just use their high attack power, you have to have the correct setup with your scales effects to beat sticky end boards. And three, the deck's only OTK potential is on an open end board. One face down monster with a decent defense keeps your opponent alive for the next turn, and you have almost no plays on their turn apart from two trap cards that are only available during the battle phase. To conclude, I like this deck for its ability to beat over your opponent with a club, but its one note predictability and hard punishes make it difficult to recommend for anyone trying to keep up with the meta. You can swing your scales all you'd like, but you could just play Metal Foes instead. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh! related content. Also, thank you to MBT Yu-Gi-Oh! for the formula of this series. His 10-minute testing for the TCG is the kind of content that the Yu-Gi-Oh! space needs more of, and I hope that my spin for old formats does it justice. My name is Doc Conrad YGO, and I hope to see you back in the lab.